This video is for the revision of titration. This is how we put on the pipette filler onto the pipette. So we hold at the very end like that so that we do not break it and cut our hand. So now we fill in the pipette with the pipette filler until it reaches the fine mark on the pipette. So we put that volume into the volumetric flask. So volumetric flask is used if you want to dilute a solution. So in this case, it's gonna be the acid. We dilute the acid. So we have to add water until it reaches the fine line on the volumetric flask. Next, we're gonna shake and invert the volumetric flask. Next, we're gonna wash the burette with the solution it's going to contain. So in this case, that would be the acid. So we'll use minimal amount of acid to wash or rinse the burette. Now using another pipette or wash the pipette from before, then we're gonna, um, we're gonna fill in this pipette this time with the alkali. So I'm gonna rinse the pipette with the alkali first. And now that the pipette is rinsed with the alkali, so it's clean, doesn't have extra moles of water in it. Now we can fill the pipette with the alkali. So uh, it has to reach the fine mark on the pipette that says 25 centimeter cubes or milliliters. And then put it into the conical flask. Next, we put in the indicator. In this case, it's methyl orange. So since alkali is in the conical flask, methyl orange is going to show yellow color. Now we're gonna do the titration. If you're right-handed, use your right hand to control the tap on the burette and use your left hand to swirl the conical flask. If you're left-handed, then use your left hand to control the tap on the burette and use your right hand to swirl the conical flask. Right now it's yellow color and the end point, it should be orange color since this is methyl orange. And then we'll read the reading on the burette. If you overshoot, then it will become um, red. So methyl orange in acid will be red. It looks kind of pink because um, it's quite dilute. Okay, let's say this is the titration that we did just now. So this is a burette, a pipette. Um, this is a 25 centimeter cube pipette. This burette is 50 centimeter cubes. This is a conical flask. And this is a dropper, or we can call it a teat pipette. So the concentration of the HCl is one mole per dm cube, and we have 25 centimeter cubes of NaOH. We know that the equation for sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid is one is to one here. Keep in mind that the burette is not to measure the volume that it contains, but it's to measure how much uh, of the volume went into the conical flask. So we might get a question like this. We need to read the reading on the burette. The burette reading, it runs from the top to the bottom. So one is at the top and 50 down there means that it's empty. So uh, zero means full. So let's look at the initial burette reading. Zero is up here 
and each one of this is 0 0.1. So here is one, this would be 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2, and all the way here. So when you see the reading like this, read the one at the bottom most. So this would be 1.9. And as for the final Burette reading, so this is 31, 31.5, 31.9. And the volume used, so if you imagine one is somewhere here and 31.9 is somewhere here. So this much escape into the conical flask. So that will be the difference between 31.9 and 1.9. So 30 centimeter cubes went into the conical flask. Let's record that here. So I put those readings here. Let's say we repeat the experiment and got 31.5 as the final reading and initial reading was 1.5. So the volume of HCl used is 30 again. So I'm gonna take the average. So 30 centimeter cube. Okay, so let's do a calculation to find out what is the concentration of the alkali that we used here, the NaOH. We know that the ratio is one is to one in moles. So one is to one. Therefore, M acid V acid equals to M base V base. That's the number of moles. So these um, ratio here, they are molar ratios. Okay, M acid is given up here. It's one mole per dm cube. And V acid would be our titration reading. M base is what we're looking for. And V base is how much base did we use, which is 25 centimeter cubes from the pipette just now that we put into the conical flask. Now we can calculate our M base. So the concentration of the base is 1.2 mole per dm cube, which makes sense uh, that it's more concentrated than the acid because we use less of it. Now let's see what will the calculation look like if we change to H2SO4. So we see that H2SO4 here, it's not one is to one with the alkali, it's two is to one here, the ratio. So the molar ratio is not one to one this time. Let's say we get a titration value of 21 centimeter cubes. So this time M acid V acid is not equal to M base V base, but the mole of base is two times the mole of acid. So two times the mole of acid equals to the mole of base. This is how we'll do our calculation. Let's say every other details here are the same. So one mole per dm cube of acid, but not HCl this time, H2SO4. Volume for M base, we don't know, and V base. So M base equals to two multiplied by this and divide by 25. So my concentration of base is 1.68 mole per dm cube. The reason we repeat this experiment and get the average is so that we can eliminate random errors here. So this is the reason for repeating the experiment uh, to get a more reliable result here. Okay, if our purpose is to prepare NaCl, a salt, then we would repeat the whole um, experiment here without the indicator. 
So if we done this experiment with the indicator, then the salt will be contaminated with this methyl orange. So we'll have to repeat this experiment using the average value here, which is 30 centimeter cubes. And we'll repeat that without an indicator, just 30 centimeter cubes directly from the burette. Then after the titration, we will heat off the water in an evaporating dish and start to see the NaCl on the evaporating dish when the uh, water evaporates.